Alrighty, welcome back. We're going to be doing uh, the Fusion to Prusa Slicer software, the Prusa printer software. We're going to slice it in Fusion. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find my product. And we're going to work with this headphone hook that I designed. Go ahead and close where you open the, the file and we're going to move out of this design space that you're pretty used to and move into the manufacturing space. It's over here on the right hand side, on the left hand side. Here up here at the top, you're gonna to wanna to change over to the additive window, which is where you do 3D printing stuff. The milling window is the other one that you'll use for the CNC's, but today we're gonna to be working in the additive window. The other thing to make sure that you have on is you come up here to your name and you select preferences. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure in the cloud in the manufacturer space that you have cloud libraries enabled right here. That's important because uh, that's where your tools will be saved. We'll talk about that later. All right. First thing is we're going to set up a setup. Come to setup, go over to machine. You're going to select the machine. For y'all, you're not going to have these uh, in your library. So you're going to come to the Fusion 360 library, look up uh, Prusa, P R U S A. And you see here that there's five different printers. We have the MKI3, or the i3 MK3, and the i3 MK3S. But if you just use the MK3 every time, it will slice just fine. So just use that. And then you're gonna copy it with this button here. Come to your cloud library, and paste it. Pretty simple. Um, and that just lets you edit it. Select it, it'll load it up over here. Next, you're gonna to wanna to select the print settings. Same process here, you're gonna come down and we're gonna be using PLA 1.75 millimeter filament with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And the layer height is gonna be 0.2. You're gonna, oh, don't double click on that. You're gonna single click on that and copy it over to your cloud library. Same process. Then you're gonna click on that, that's the one I just put in there, and I'm gonna edit it. For this, I'm gonna change the name. I'm gonna call this uh, tutorial Prusa settings. You can call it just Prusa filament or whatever you want to call it, PLA. Um, a couple things we want to talk about here. First is the sparse infill density. This is going to be when you're printing, uh, how much of the interior is going to be uh, filled solid. So uh, if 100%, it would be a solid shape. You don't really need that because uh, it doesn't need to be that strong. Also, it's going to waste time and material. And so a good rule of thumb, I and mean, 15% is going to be fine for anything that's just decorative or just holding uh, something. Uh, if it's a structural uh, for a piece, you're going to want it a little bit bigger, maybe 30%. Um, but you're not going to need any more than that. Uh, layer height, uh, keep it at 0.2. Um, generally, the Prusas work best at 0.2. A lot of people uh, will try to bring it down to like 1 or, 0.5, or 0.1 or 0.5, 0 0.05 to try to get it a little bit more uh, precise, but it just screws up the Prusa. It's... It, can't handle anything smaller than that. So I would stick at uh, 0.2. The other couple things you wanna look at here are the, the raft. Um, I, I prefer brim and I'll talk about brims later, but the raft is basically a plate um, that you set um, that is that is printed and then the piece is printed on top of that plate. Um, and it just helps isolate it a little bit from the build plate. But I think that the brim works better. And I'll talk about that in a second. The other button that you wanna look at is enabling supports, which is right here. And that's really important to have it checked, especially if you have un overhung uh, pieces. So if you remember, uh, and I'll show you again in a minute, um, how I have my piece set up, it's gonna use supports. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but you'll wanna make sure that that's uh, clicked on. In the extruder tab, the only thing that you're gonna to wanna to worry about is the extruding temperature. So 220 is a good temperature for the nozzle. I think 70 is a better temperature for the build plate, so I would change that. Layers, that's all gonna be okay. Layer height, you can change that, but that's okay. Um, infill, you don't really need to change anything in here. The only place you need to change is back here in the basic. Now we're gonna talk about the skirt and brim. For this, it has 10 loops at one layer. And so this is basically like uh, a, a, the brim of like a cowboy hat or like a wide brim hat that's uh, all uh, circling the piece and it helps it stick, uh, prevents curling at the edges, helps it from sliding around, prevent it from sliding around. Um, and it really is a more effective tool, I think, than the brim. And only one height, which is uh, only one layer height. You don't need any more than that. 
And the rest of this, the only other one you need to worry about is distance. That should always be zero. So it's touching the piece, so it helps it from moving. Uh, if you want to mess with the raft settings, they're in here. Um, and the support angle is 67 degrees, like I said. All the rest of this should be fine. And all the rest of this, the cooling uh, and the G-code, that's all fine. So you press OK. You select the tutorial preset settings or whatever you called it. And then you're going to make sure this is additive. And then this is the other one that you want to do. Make sure arrangement is uh, automatic. 90% of the time, that's going to work fine. Uh, so you'll just use that. So we here, see here, it snapped it. So this is the size of the Prusa relative to my piece. Um, and you're going to want to hit generate to generate the, the toolpath. And what you see here, that's a generating uh, how it's going to add the material. Um, and it may take five minutes, depending on how fast your computer is, how big your file is. Um, let me turn off the sketches so we're not looking at that. Sketches. So I'm going to go to simulate here. That's an important tool. It helps you just see what you're working with and what the, the, the machine thinks you're going to do. So this purple layer right here is the the brim. You can see this if you counted them. That's 10 layers around the piece. The piece is in red. And so that is the brim. And I think that's the best way to do it. Now I'm going to have it start printing. You see here that it's doing this kind of uh, squiggly line um, honeycomb thing. And that is uh, what does the 15%. So that would get more dense if you were to bring it up to 30%. And that's the structure that's inside your piece. Let me see, I paused right here. And there was that orange sheet that came up was the top face. And then these blue things that are being printed are the supports. So they'll come up in sheets um, in order to give it a surface to print this overhung section on. And then they'll just break out when you're done with the, the piece. Um, and they'll be they'll be real simple to take off. And then you see here now the second orange sheet at the top of the piece is being printed on over uh, this blue supports. And then you just pop these supports out with pliers or with uh, your hands. And it's about to finish off here at the top. Um, and that would be you can look at the end. That's what the end piece would look like. Now we're gonna close out of this. It's uh, generally inefficient to print things with overhangs that are in this shape because you could just print on this face and there'd be no overhang, it would just print normally. Um, so look at ways to minimize the support because they are kind of a pain in the butt um, and they often break the piece. Um, so in order to prevent that, what we do here is we go to the move tab and that allows us to move this body. I would come to this face and I would grab this rotational tool and I would bring it down to 90 degrees. And now you see that it's in this orientation to where it's gonna print without supports. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that when you move it often, it's going to be off the build plate. So if I snap to the face, you see it's a good quarter inch off the build plate. To fix that, you're just going to select the body. You're going to hit this button here that says move to uh, place parts on platform, and you press OK. And it brings it right down. And then if I snap back to the face, you see that it's right there on there. You will have to regenerate the, the tool path because you did change the, the orientation. Now, after it regenerates, we're going to simulate it. 99. We're going to simulate it, and this time you can watch it. It's going to print without supports in a similar manner, um, but it's just going to be a little bit um, a little bit easier because it doesn't have to do those supports because it can just go straight up. And so if I was printing this piece, this is the orientation that I would print it in. And we can go ahead and skip it to the end. That's what it looked like. Now that I have my, my toolpath, I'm happy with my toolpath. It looks the way I want it to do. The orientation is right. What we're going to do next is we're going to go to the post-process tab. We're going to open the post-process tab, make sure that this printer is the right printer. Um, and then you're just going to change the name to something you know. So this is a headphone uh, clamp for a headphone hook. So I'm going to say headphone clamp. I would always make sure that you know what the, the name is, especially because you're putting them on the presos. Um, they're going to be on SD cards that you don't necessarily have control over. And so making sure it's a recognizable name for you. Maybe put your name on there. If you're in your dorm room and you're slicing this before you come to be ready, uh, I would save it to your documents folder or another folder on your computer that you know where it is. For me, I have a, a tab on my hard drive that I use that's CSI, um, this, you know, for the makerspace. Um, but if you want to change that folder, you, you don't click on this output folder. That's just opening the output folder. You're going to check, click on this dot, 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 and that's going to select a different output folder. So if I say I wanted to put it in my um, STLs folder, I would open that. And then I would select the folder, and you see here that it's updated to the STLs folder. And that's all that you have to do here. You're going to post it, and it's going to say, do you want to save it? You're going to say save. And then you're going to get this dialog window up here that says that it posted success successfully. 
If you're in the space already and you're ready to print, you can go ahead and borrow one of our dongles and one of the SD cards, and you can just throw it straight onto the SD card from your computer, um, and then we can put it onto the to the printers. Um, and then from here, you would uh, consult the, the, the video that shows you how to print on the Prusas, or you would ask one of us for help. Um, but at this point, we've generated the G-code, um, and we're ready to uh, print.